So it's been about two weeks since my first OACP exam attempt and I've had a bit of time to sort of digest that experience to come out with some key takeaways from that exam attempt and what is my plan for the next time round. So prior to that first attempt, these are the learning resources I've used to prepare for the exam. You can see it's pretty comprehensive and I made a video on all of this in detail on my channel. So you can check it out if you want to go through the same learning that I did. It is a pretty comprehensive list and all up, I think I've gone through over 200 boxes or so. Now, don't let this intimidate you um, about the OACP exam to make you think that even though you have gone through this much learning, you're not gonna be able to pass because I don't really think that's the case. And I'll go over why I think so in this video in a bit more detail. Here is a breakdown of what went down during my exam. So the exam started at 2 p.m. And within the first hour, I finished the buffer overflow. Now it only took about an hour to do because it also included time setting up the VPN, going through the troubleshooting script with the proctor and grabbing all the screenshots for the buffer overflow. But the whole process was very simple. And if you've done the try hack me room on buffer overflow practice for the OACP, you're really gonna have no trouble doing the buffer overflow. Just make sure that you read the instructions on your exam panel after you connect to the VPN very carefully. After the buffer overflow, I did the 10 pointer machine and that was completed within the first hour as well. So within two hours, I already got 35 points. Uh, but from that point on, things really slowed down. So from 4 p.m. to about 11.30 p.m. on the first day, I did not get any points. So I pretty much ran all my enumeration scripts on the final three machines. I think I pretty much enumerated everything out, but I think one factor that prevented me from making progress on the first day is because I didn't dig deep enough. So on the second day, I focused on one of the most likely ways to exploitation on the 25 pointer and I pretty much got it within an hour. So the second day started at 6 a.m. and by 7 a.m. I got the shell on the 25 pointer and then by 8 a.m. I was root. So after 8 a.m. I had 60 points and I essentially had about six hours to just get a shell on any of the two remaining machines to be able to pass the exam. But obviously that didn't happen. So here we are now. Some of the key takeaways from that exam is you should take longer breaks. Now, because of the way that I set up my exam, the location where I did my exam, I was doing it in the office. And because of that, there was really nothing else I can do on my break. I could get some food, maybe go to the bathroom, I think the longest break I took was only about 15 minutes or so. Now, some people talk about ideas popping out to them during a break. And for me, that didn't happen. I think it's because my breaks were too short. So next time I'm going to force myself to take longer breaks, probably 30 minutes to an hour, and we'll see how that goes. And that kind of brings us onto the next point is a running out of ideas versus running out of time. During the exam, in your mind, you probably don't want to take longer breaks because you think you're gonna run out of time. Now, I really don't think that is the case. I pretty much enumerated out everything within the first maybe three or four hours. So actually going through all your enumeration checklists, it doesn't take that long and after that, it's just a matter of digging in to the paths that is most likely to be the exploit. Now, why did I not find the exploits for the 220 pointer machines? And 
why it took so long for me to find the 25 pointer machine exploit is because I had to balance enumeration versus trying harder a bit better. So what do I mean by that? So you've heard people say enumeration is key to passing the OACP exam and try harder is sort of the other side of the coin where you're trying different variations and trying to make a particular exploit work. So if you try harder too much at a rabbit hole and it's essentially not the intended path to exploitation, you are going to fry your brain and essentially you are not going to be able to pass the exam if you fall too deep into rabbit holes. But on the other hand, if you do too much enumeration, and not dig into any of the exploit paths enough, as in you don't try hard enough on the particular exploit paths, then you also fail the exam because you won't find a path into the machines. Now, funny thing in my exam attempt, I think I leaned heavily towards too much enumeration because of all the advice saying enumeration, enumeration, enumeration. So pretty much what I did on my exam attempt was I enumerated stuff and then I tried just a little bit on each of the particular um, exploit potential exploit paths and after just maybe 10 or 15 minutes of trying on that particular path I would say nope that's probably not the exploit I'm gonna move on now I think I moved on too quickly during my exam so this is quite kind of where it's coming full circle and I failed because I did too much enumeration and didn't dig deep enough or didn't spend enough time actually um, hammering away at those things that I already found during my enumeration. So in the case of the 25 pointer, I was pretty much just a fraction away from getting the exploit on the first day very quickly, but I moved on too quickly and by the time I cycled back to that correct exploit path again, my brain was already tired, so I only was able to get it on the second day. So that's a bit of a combination between taking longer breaks and also balancing out the enumeration and then the bashing your head against one exploit. So you really need to strike a balance between the enumeration and then the try harder to be able to pass the exam. And I think in this aspect, there is a sort of a gaming the exam sort of factor because once you have taken the OSCP exam one time, you're definitely gonna have a better intuition of how hard or how deep you have to dig to be able to find that exploit. And this exam attempt was extremely useful for me to try and get that intuition of how offensive security hides the correct exploit and how far and how wide you have to enumerate. Striking a balance between those two, it's a very hard thing to try and explain to someone because it's quite unique to the OACP exam. So the last point is, if you don't think you're ready for the OACP exam, you've done a lot of practice, you don't feel ready, you're not sure when to take the exam, I would say just go for it because really there is no shame in failing and that feedback is super helpful for your next time. So in my current role, almost everyone has the OACP exam already and a lot of people, I would say a majority of them failed on the first attempt and on the subsequent attempts they absolutely smashed it so get that exam experience under your belt use that feedback to try and improve your approach for next time and i think when you look back at the exam after you've passed you're gonna feel like it was extremely easy that was how i found on the 25 pointer machine on the second day when i solved that 25 pointer i felt that uh, why was I so slow in solving that I could have easily done it on the first day? So I really don't want this experience to kind of shock you guys in thinking that it's too hard um, Even though I've done all this practice, I've failed the exam Go for the exam, get that feedback, and then um, you'll be able to smash it next time 
So what's next for me? I'm gonna essentially rebook the exam as soon as possible. Um, pretty much I'm gonna try and book it in after my cool down has completed. Now on that note, there seems to be some issues with rebooking the exam at the moment. Offensive security is migrating their system onto a new subscription based system. So I cannot actually rebook my exam at the moment, which is kind of annoying. So hopefully that will be sorted out soon and then I'll be able to book that exam in soon. Um, I'm not gonna take really a different approach for the second attempt. Pretty much I'm, I'm going to stay the course, essentially do what I've been doing the whole time. Um, as I've said before, um, I feel this is definitely the correct path. In the meantime, yeah, just keep on hacking. I am trying not to burn out. I've made a few references to keeping the burnout at bay on some of my previous videos because that's really the key, right? In this industry, you have to keep on learning and if you get burnt out and stop, then that's, you're done. So um, try to keep a little bit of progress, make a little bit of progress every day. It's that momentum over a long period of time that's going to be doing you good rather than just going on a bender for a couple of months and then completely slacking off for the next um, rest of the year. So that is my plan for the next time. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about the um, exam. Uh, leave it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.